of those sponges you use to like wipe your oh, back? Oh, a loofah. Yeah, yes. because it's like this puppy part and then she's so tiny. Yes, yes, yes. yes. whatever it is, take it back. Just accused Marcel of I didn't accuse her, I didn't accuse her. Marcel. Marcel. <laughs> <laughs> you falsely accused her husband of sexual assault. <laughs> Three small mustard seeds. Mm -hmm. To make my husband look like he wanted to do something inappropriate. Neck. You have to say it. You did not accuse me. I didn't do it. I'm accusing you of being a lying ass bitch. No, that's what you were. No. Oh. Um. I want to, I'm saying this only because I want to clear this up. No tear left behind. Okay. <laughs> get it, girl. Get, get everything I want. <laughs> Let me finish, please. We need to finish. move on now. The masks are gonna come off, and we're gonna get to the bottom of the wires. Uh oh. <laughs> what? Her spirit bit me. The venom, the poison. Hey y'all, it's Brian Keith and I'm back with another video and today we're going to be talking about The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip Season 3, Episode 3 and 4. Um, I'm about to go to brunch real quick. I just woke up, had to freshen up, do what I had to do and I'm about to go ahead and get this video done real quick. And there was a lot of stuff that happened that really irritated me, i.e. Heather and Whitney. I'm done with you. But y'all, like, comment, subscribe, let's get into the video. Yeah. Let me check my check my shit real quick. Hotter than the fire, come out my flame and if you wanna play with me, you can't play in me. On the playground, bitch, you can't play with me. Got it, want it, secure in the bag. So leads off where it left off, and you know, Lee is basically bored with Alexia's story, and she's over here talking, talking, talking. Don't get me wrong, I've watched Miami and I was bored with it as well, just because it's like girl, I heard this, but I give like Giselle and them, you know, grace just because they didn't hear the story, so they want to hear it. Cool, fine. We find out when the girls get up from the, from the table that Lee, that um, Marisol. So we find out when we get up from the table that Marisol has a ulcer in her stomach and she's on medication now, so she can't drink as much as she would like. And I wonder how that's going to change her personality because if she relied on alcohol so much and she's going to cut back now. How is that going to really affect who she is as a person? Because her whole personality and identity seems like it's wrapped up around alcohol, right? So while the girls are over here at the table and they're over here mingling and talking, you know, Leo basically stopped the whole conversation. So all the girls gave her the attention that, okay, Leah, this is what you want. Here you go. What's up? What you want to talk about? So Leah's like, um, I don't want to talk. No, I'm fine. No, no, no. So everybody's just like, okay, so you wanted the attention, but now you don't want it. And now you want to over here act so coy and meek. So they're over it and you know all the girls are getting annoyed with um leah outside of candace whitney heather i'm assuming because they really haven't said too much candace has been her champion <laughs> um but one thing i've noticed about leah that i don't like usually i think leah she okay but one thing i don't like is the fact that she wants to be a habitual victim um with her her friend um whitney i'm that is irritating like when they were over here on the boat talking about, oh my god why me like y'all are all coming for me like girl you want to be the victim but you asking for it but we're going to get to it <clears throat> so the other girls um they were here shading Can candace because you know candace had like um the weak shade for the names like they're still on this name thing candace you gave yourself the name petty does not give you the right to be petty i know she's gonna live up to what she said we had a little time and my whole thing is y'all sound like y'all are really upset you sound very upset like if you if you don't care about the names and if it was just whatever like oh girl that's light shade is this and the third then why are you still on it why are you why y'all doing joint interviews about like maybe you know it is what it is if it's so light um so you know candace she slips away she does a wardrobe change she dressed as as a life-size loofah yeah because it's like this puppy part and then she's so tiny yes yes yeah whatever it is take it back yeah what you got no, but um, she does her performance to drive back. It was a really good performance. I'm gonna give Candace credit just because she didn't have that much time to perform and you know practice with the um dancers that she had. All the girls go back to the sprinter and the villa, and you know Giselle tells them that you know it's not in Candace's nature to be a responder. And it's not so, it, that's not her nature. She is a responder. Oh, okay. As opposed to a initiator. That's why in my last video I said I'm gonna pull that back because. Candace does not just pop off for no reason, right? That's not really in her nature. Giselle called it, but it's funny how Giselle can see that now, but on the show and anywhere else in Potomac land, then it's like, oh, Candace, you start all the drama. It's you, 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 you go back and forth with, you do this, you do that. But now she's a responder. But on y'all show, y'all make it seem like Candace is the villain and she over here 
Now, don't get me wrong. Do I feel like Candace go low? Candace go low. And she means it. That's why it's even lower. <laughs> but it's like y'all make it seem like Candace it just pops off and then y'all are responding when it's vice versa. So it's, I'm happy that Giselle brought that up because I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to save that clip and I'm going to bring it up while I do my Potomac view, um, reviews for season eight. <laughs> you know, it's day three and the girls are ready to do their yacht party. This is Alexia's event. Everyone is, you know, having their sidebar conversation and, you know, um, Pepsi has to leave and Alexia asks, well, does anybody want to go back with Pepsi, you know? And, you know, Portia was like, Leah, do you want to go back with Pepsi? <laughs> do you? Um, and I just feel like now y'all picking like y'all gonna give her reason to want to play the victim card um so the girls sit down and they start munch munch on some food and you know giselle brings up leah and you know she asks leah like you know basically okay you wanted to leave like what's going on leah basically piggybacks off that question and she says to portia and giselle like okay so why are y'all keep bringing up that i want to go home like what's going on with that because i'm having a good time but i feel like y'all are trying to you know take an opportunity to shade me because i expressed earlier that i wanted to go home but that was just like a me thing portia basically says Girl, you are wild Girl, you are wild as hell leah you're like confronting someone leah. about so Leah brings up, you know, Marisol texting her about her drinking. And I don't even know how we got onto that, but yeah. Marisol texted me being like, I really respect you for not drinking, blah, blah, blah. But I wish you were still drinking. So I felt a type of way. She's like, Marisol, you texted me about my drinking, talking about, um, you know, I support you in your drinking, but I hope you could drink. She's like, who says that? And I don't think, like, to be honest, maybe, I don't know. I'm not going to say her feelings are unvalid or you know the sensitivity to the topic is unvalid it's not but to me i don't think that it was that deep it's just saying like girl you know i support you if you need somebody to be a sober coach girl i got you but i wish you could drink and you know have a good time to send the third i don't think it was that deep but you know maybe it was one of the situations where it's like you have to cartel what you say to certain people because of that certain their certain sensitivity to the topic Alexa chimes in. She's like, you know, people say it all the time. Like, people, that's what they say. Like, you know, you have to just like, go with the flow. Like, that's what people say. You know, it, it's what it is. That's what they do. I was just like, okay, let's just, you know, she starts getting a little spicy. And she was like, okay, how are you going to question everybody? And then you want to back away. And then you want to act like, you know, you're the victim. And then you want to over here call out Marcel? Who does that? Now you just accused Marcel. 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 <laughs> I was like, first of all, Portia, we're not about to speed by that. Who is Marcel? <laughs> At this point, Lear is like basically firing off on, on everyone and calling out Marisol for her drinking. Um, and Marisol's talking about, okay, you want to call me, call me out for my drinking, but it's like, I don't have a drinking problem. You do. <laughs> but you do have a drinking problem, ma'am. You have a whole ulcer in your stomach. That the acidity from all the drinking that you're doing in your stomach, you have to realize, because Marisol, she don't eat. Like, if you saw it on the boat, the girl had a piece of shrimp, like two pieces of, like, flour, <laughs> off of uh, Alexia plate, like, girl, what are you doing? But Marisol don't eat, and she don't soak up all that alcohol, so it's just like alcohol sitting in her stomach. Girl! Um... But like I said before, now Leah's like, everybody's coming after me. Like, I like what, what is going on? And I'm like, Leah, girl, like you can't ask people questions because she asked. She asked a question to Portia and Giselle. Then she directed the question to Marisol. Now that all three of them are coming at you, you can't. When you ask somebody a question, you can't then just dictate how they're supposed to respond. Like you ask them a question, they're going to respond the way they're going to respond. And you're just going to have to either respond back or just sit down eat your food and shut up but you can't then try to want to cartel what they say like oh my god y'all are coming after me girl ain't nobody come after you ask them a question and they could answer that and then candace she chimes in she's like y'all are bullying bullying 101 bullying y'all are bullying and with candace you know you are my girl down but i'm gonna have to disagree strongly because i don't feel like she was being bullied at all like i said before Leah asked a question, so if she asked a question, they have a right to respond. What you, what, 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 what were they supposed to do? Like, okay, Brian, what do you feel about this? And me like, um, good. No, this is Real Housewives. What are we talking about? Like, at the end of the day, I'm going to respond the way I respond. If you don't like it, you just don't like it. Like, with Leah, is just like, they're both talking about, at this point, yelling like, bullying, bullying. It wasn't bullying. They're just asking a question. 
I, I, just, I just don't say that's bullying at all. And I feel like people throw that word around a lot. So Candace then starts crying. Like, you know, Candace, she will, she will literally, a tear will fall quick. She started crying. She's speaking up. She was like, you know, y'all want to condemn Leah for feeling uncomfortable on this trip. But I feel uncomfortable too. <laughs> but, you know, she said she felt uncomfortable too. She was like, how can y'all over here, like, you know, y'all want to condemn her. She's trying to open up to you guys to let you know how she's feeling. And she was like, the reason why I didn't open up and I don't feel comfortable is because of that same reason. Y'all y'all over here trying to condemn somebody and make somebody want to go home. And she was like, I'm feeling the same way. Um, Portia right, runs over to, to try to console Candace, right? But then in turn, questions Candace. And she's like, okay, so she's like, you have, you're you claiming like you have anxiety, but your event was the shadiest. Like, how is that? Make that make sense. And I'm just like, it's funny because of the events that's going to happen in the future, especially in episode four. Alexia's game was shady. Portia's game was shady. So what are we talking about? And that's the thing is just like, at the end of the day, yes, Candace could feel uncomfortable and have anxiety, but Candace know that she came on this show, it's a job. She's gonna go there to do her job. Like at the end of the day, Portia, a hit dog holler and you just mad because you got put on the spot about why you took that woman's husband. Congrats though. Candace was like, at the end of the day, um, um, Portia basically tell us, she was like, so basically throwing shade and stuff is like how the way you feel comfortable, that's how you feel comfortable. And Candace was, was like, if that's like, you know, if that's what I do, that's what I do. Like, don't project your insecurities on me. And then Portia talked about buzzword. Everybody's like, what's the buzzword? She's talking about project. Like, girl, that's not no damn buzzword. So the girls, you know, move inside and they have another shady game from Alexia and you know they basically throw the paddle boards and um they have like Spanish words and it has like little sayings on it it's really cute we won't speak past that because it's nothing really crazy but you know um, after that Giselle sits down she switches the gears to Heather and she's like okay Heather um so you said you and Whitney are moving forward so what's going on with that Leah brings up the fact that Whitney's still being messy she brought up the fact that Heather is how is Heather writing a book when she is still aligned with the Mormon doctrine um and she basically doesn't trust her. Heather is gas. She's over here doing all that, right? And they start arguing yet again. And like I said before, I want to go into this with details, but I'm not because I did it in my Salt Lake City reviews. Like at the end of the day, I feel this is what I feel about it. And I'm about to skip past all this. Huh? I feel that Whitney came on to season three knowing for a fact that her husband might lose his job and that she had to do pull some stunt with Lisa Barlow. So Le Whitney tried to produce a scene and try to make up these little lies and it didn't work out. Like you over here made up random stuff. You threw Meredith under the bus. You threw Angie H under the bus. You threw Heather under the bus. So it's just like one of those things where it's like you made up all these things and all three of those people are telling you that's not true. So... Whitney, so you're basically saying that three people are lying on you about something that just fell out of the sky, that Lisa Barlow wants to do something for jazz tickets and all this, this, that, and the third, right? So with Heather, I feel like Heather's downfall was the fact that they wanted to go back and forth. I feel like this was a plan between both of them. They wanted to go back and forth, and they just got caught up into the mess, like Mia and Jacqueline. I feel like Heather and Heather was probably caught off guard that the fact that Whitney threw her in it. And they probably was like, girl, I'm gonna bring this up and gonna be Kiki, da 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 da. And when Whitney brought her into it, she was just like, girl, what the fuck? You never told me that. Boom. And then with the whole black eye thing, Heather, at the end of the day, you're lying. We know at the end of the day, you just said that we, you knew who, when they basically asked the question like, um, who hit you? And she said, I'm not telling. So that implies that you knew somebody that you knew somebody hit you, so I hit you, but you're not gonna tell. If when Giselle asked a question, she would have said, "Okay, who hit you?" and you would have said, "Nobody hit me." Then nobody hit you, but you didn't say that. You said, "I'm not telling." At the end of the day, they are gonna have to figure something out, or a season five of um, Salt Lake City get them off my screen. I'm done. They want to see this black eye. That's what they like. Okay, we're done with the conversation, but I want to see this black eye. And then Heather feels like Whitney's trying to suck up and you know pander to you know Giselle and Portia. Candace, Leah, Heather, Alexia go outside, and you know Giselle. Um, <laughs> Candace says Giselle lives in the land of lies. Like she, that's all she tells. And you, we find out, you know, Candace divulges the fact that you know Giselle said this rumor 
alleged these things about Chris that he wanted to, you know, you know, do something to her in a hotel. She didn't say sexual assault. So Leah gets up because she's gagged. She's just like, how in the world are you going to over here get mad at me and call, do this big shenanigans about me saying boring, but you just accused a man of sexual assault. So she goes in there and she says that to Giselle. She's telling me that you falsely accused her husband of sexual assault. What? I just lie. She's not lying. You can ask her. I'm here. And Candace comes in and she's joins the conversation. And Candace was like, you didn't say that. You didn't say that. But what you implied, you implied that my husband was trying to do something ill to you in a hotel room. You planted that really small mustard seed mm -hmm. to make my husband look like he wanted to do something inappropriate. And it's just like, Giselle, we're not dumb. And... Giselle was like, I'm not, I wasn't going to bring it up. I'm not trying to talk about it. And that's the thing with Giselle is like, when the fire is on you, you don't want to talk about it. You don't want to bring it up. But when we go to the reunion, you ain't got nothing to say. You're just sitting there. A deer headlight. Ma'am. What? It is just like what Chris said. What have I done to you? And you don't have a reason? A rhyme or reason? And talk about, well, you lied to your wife. He might have lied to her at the end of the day. But what did he do? Cause I am, I am sick. Cause it's like he might have lied to Candace. Cool, I will give you that one. He might have. He might have asked you into that room. But what were you trying to imply? What did he do? If he didn't do anything, then what? He, what was? What was the intention? What was his body language? What? What actions? Give me something. Leah and Candace basically get back to the hotel and we see, you know, Candace was basically telling her, like, you know, you can't let Giselle slide. If you keep letting Giselle slide, she's going to think that she could do whatever to you. And this is one thing I told one of my best friends. We used to work together and I told him, I was like, you cannot let people say things to you and then let them get away with it. And they do it more than one time because our boss used to do that. I was the assistant manager at the time and our boss was the store manager. And like I told him, she would say little slick stuff. And I told him, I was like, you need to check her. And he was like, well, you know, that's the boss. I was like, that's fine. You don't have to be disrespectful, but you can let her know that the comments that she's making will not happen again. And if it do, it will be dealt with. <laughs> but it's just like, people will do certain things to you because they think they, they can. If someone that doesn't respect you and they think they can walk all over you, they're gonna keep doing it. Why? Because you let them do it. So Ken was telling Leah, like, Get your back. Oh, it's episode four. See, I'm speed through this. Oh, it's the next morning and it's Portia's day. Candace and Leah, they're still talking about Giselle being messy AF. Marisol and Alexa, they basically meet Leah and Heather for breakfast. Heather asks Leah how she doing, and but Alexia and asks Heather the bigger question, what's going on with you and Whitney? Heather feels like Whitney is fake and is sad because, you know, she told Leah basically to watch out. And in this situation, I do feel like when it comes to Whitney Heather, I do feel like Whitney is more responsible because she started the mess, but Heather is a active participant because her story keeps changing, ma'am. Portia come down, she announces that, you know, we were gonna have an excursion, but it got canceled, so we're gonna do something at the house. So, you know, Whitney um, gets a call from Lisa Barlow and they keep in about Heather and basically um, the reason why Heather wrote the book and why she won't leave the Mormon church and Lisa calls Heather a liar. <laughs> Whitney feels that, you know, she gave Heather blind loyalty just because she helped her get cast on Salt Lake City. So she's like, she's the reason why I am a housewife. So I gave her blind loyalty. But at this point, I can't keep doing that. Just because we're family doesn't mean anything. And the fact that of this is that they just found out that they were family before they start filming the season. So it wasn't like this deep rooted history of family. Like, girl, I got cousins today that I could walk past like a ghost. Like, <laughs> what are we talking about? Portia, you know, she sits down and she tells, she tries to tell Heather, you know, at the end of the day, you know, give Whitney grace, you know, help move forward. Like, you know, as some things getting, you know, this is petty stuff, just it can be moved past. And Heather basically tells, like, you know, um, you know, I'm trying to do that, but you know, Whitney is just hard, blah, blah, blah. And Portia asked her, like, so, you know, how long have your name how long have you been trying to get off the doctrine and she was like i haven't even like wrote anything to get off the doctrine and <laughs> portia's just like hold on wait a minute i like heather but at this point i don't really know what to believe yesterday the list was super important she was upset about it when whitney brought it up and you ain't even started so now portia feels like you know heather has too many stories and she's a bad liar right 
Lady gets in her confessional and she speaks um about Nick. Nick. And all the ladies are being like followers and Candace is the only one that's basically being real. And I feel like that's kind of biased just because you're close with Candace doesn't mean that everybody else is fake. Um, I feel like everybody is partnered up, so it is what it is. So Heather and Giselle sit inside and they're over here just kicking, just chopping it up. And why did Giselle try to get um Heather to call Jen? And why did Heather do it? If Jen was your friend, Heather, why you knew Giselle wanted you knew she's the queen of questions. Why would you even put Jen in that situation? Not me saying that she needs some type of grace. Just saying, if that was your friend, why would you even put her in that situation? One, two, it was already late as hell. You know the woman able to pick the phone up. Come on now. And three, you talked about Whitney over here being thirsty, but look at you. Okay. She, she does her event. It's called The Q. And, you know, the girls um, over here start playing um, volleyball in elephant suits. It was really cute. Miami team wins. But, you know... Candace basically asks Portia a question. Well, they all sit down at the table. They're over here eating food. It's like a, um, um, I forgot what it's called, like a Korean barbecue style where you like cook the food. It's raw, blah, blah, blah. Portia, I want to talk to you about something that's been on my mind. Um. So Candace is over here. You know, she talks to Portia. She's just like, Portia? <laughs> and it's only because I want to clear this up. One thing about Candace, there will be no tear left behind. Okay? <laughs> Portia, um, the Monique fight, I was so hurt that you were on her side, and you know, the chat room, you said that I needed to sue her to get a down payment on my house, one, false, two, I just feel like it really hurt me for you to say that. So Candace, I'm with you when you're right, and I'm which which you're wrong too but at the end of the day i still want to hold you accountable to the fact that i don't think that portia was saying it like a dig i feel like it was unjust and she was just saying like you know girl she was just doing this just to get get um the money down here on the house i don't think it was like fa actual factual it was just like unjust just to be joke you know banter um portia said you know that was my friend and my friend when my friend was giving me facts i that's the only thing i can go off of and then Por and kendrick was like at the end of the day you said your friend was going off of facts but it wasn't facts so what are you talking about she said i got destroyed on social media because of the fact that people thought i threw a glass at this woman in her face for me to get beat up and we all know that was the, the truth and we all know at the end of the day, I feel like the whole situation, Monique and Candace both played a part in it, period. But what it was, I think Candace is trying to say is the fact that Monique went on the campaign to save her image before the show came out on season five. And she let people drag her and create a narrative about Candace. And that was the reason why she couldn't, she was basically over Monique because Monique let people go run with the story and the narrative that she got hit with a glass, which is why she attacked Candace. And that wasn't the case. You no, know, Giselle chimes in and she was like, you know, was like, I use that same platform to defend Candace and that wasn't even good enough for her. And Candace basically wants an apology, but she's just like, at the end of the day, she's like, you didn't, she's like, you got a statement from her, but you didn't get a statement from me. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I felt like, they should have had a statement from me and asked me if you were probably my friend. But Candace, you gotta realize at the end of the day, Giselle, she did defend you and she did like basically speak your side of the story. So I get where Giselle is coming from. Here is the caveat. Giselle, you didn't defend Candace just because it was the right thing to do. You defended Candace because you were trying to take down a Monique. That's really what it was. Like you're over here like, I defended you, I defended you. Yes, you defended her, but can't, that was a bonus, defending Candace. You, your plan was to get Monique off of that show because we all know how season five was going. Season five was going to take down Candace. So once that fight happened, you saw opportunity to get rid of your arch nemesis, which was Monique. <laughs> but the way season five was going, how Robin and you and Monique over here came after Candace in the beginning, and then it just seemed like a Candace barrage all the way through season five. Mind you, I watched every season of Potomac, so I know what I'm talking about. Let's talk about it. Bing. 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 But we're not about to sit up here and talk about like y'all didn't come after Candace relentlessly. 
And then when season five came, it's like, oh my God, Candace, we love you, girl. After that fight. So the girls do like the um the messy um scorpion eating game where it's like if you don't answer the question then you have to um eat uh, a scorpion. But I already said the whole thing about they asked him have the black eye question, so we can skip over that. Um the only thing I found funny was the fact that I feel like Heather has been playing with production and the fact that production is gonna let her slide is very funny. And the fact that um Robin played with production, we'll see if they let her slide because <laughs> I'm like, y'all is funny so we get back to the villa um and basically marisol and alexia are is starting to bubble up their frustration because i did not know that they shared a room so i thought leah had the worst room no they do because i would not be sharing a room on a vacation when everybody has their own room and having a good time i'm not doing that nope um so at the end of the episode we see this whole um real housewives of new orleans style dinner if this is how it's gonna look that I'm, I'm not mad at it um the soundtrack was nice everything was nice they had a dinner but it got rained on so they had to go inside go over here start asking questions you know giselle this is G giselle's event and she's gonna ask the questions so she basically asked one of the questions was um is it shady or reasonable to um call someone a bully who wasn't being bullied I feel like that bully word was, like I said, is very loose thrown out there. And um, I don't feel like they were being bullies, period. Is it reasonable or shady to have a book title that you don't basically believe in? <laughs> um, Whitney and Heather, they yet again start arguing about the Mormon thing. Candace is visibly annoyed because as Jasmine Sullivan said, we're going in circles. Circles. We need to move on now. Oh, Four days of listening to these girls scream about church. And I, it's, it drains my, my, it drains me. And I really want to stop the video right now because I'm just like, I'm drained. Because Whitney, Heather, I, we can't talk about this more. Y'all need to figure, Whitney, you're going to either have to be the villain. I was never friends with Lisa Barlow. And she hasn't left the Mormon church. They're going to come off and we're going to get to the bottom of the lies. At the end of the day, y'all, this is what I want for them. Don't be friends. Don't be friends. Please don't. I'm over it. I can't do them anymore. And if they keep bringing up this topic, I'm just going to skip over in these reviews because they annoy my soul. We already know. Like, at the end of the day, we already, we already know, y'all. But we sound drained I am. But, y'all, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.